my second attempt to something that I wanted to do for this month's soap challenge, natural soaps. I'm not sure if I would have already put the other soap up or I'm going to put it up after this one. I'm sure by now I'd have made a decision when you see this. What I've got in front of me here is some natural coloured soap doughs that I've made and I want to make a cute little bird to go inside my soap. So I've got all prepared. Now the natural colours that I've got here are some indigo and I'm going to use my indigo to make the tail and the top of the head of the bird. I've got some activated charcoal here and that's going to be the bird's going to have a black stripe down the front of its chest and then a black eye and some little feet. This is not titanium dioxide, we're not allowed to use any TD in the challenge because it's not deemed natural botanical um, colourant as it were. So this is literally just my plain soap batter. It, my plain soap is pretty white as you can see. If you look at it closely it has sort of a bit of a more opaque nature to it. I've actually got some, well, I was using some earlier actually. This is my soap dough that I make with TD, I'm not sure. So it's <laughs> tiny, you can hardly see the difference can you? Tiny weeny little bit difference and to be honest when I put TD in my soap anyway I only put a very small amount in it because I do know that my natural soap colour is a very white colour anyway so I just really use the TB, TD to um, not have it that sort of slightly translucent look that you get without any colour in it at all. So for this one nothing, that's just literally my plain soap and that's going to be for sort of the main part of the head of the bird. This little diddly bit of grey is just a blend of some activated charcoal and some plain soap, so a small amount of activated charcoal. That's going to be my little bird's beak. Over here this is a netto as an infusion and that's going to be the main bit of the bird's chest. <laughs> it's funny, when I was testing all my natural colours, I tend to test them every time I make a batch of infusions up, I then retest the natural colours and when I tested it I got a really nice colour from my Anato and it was a lovely yellow without Anato if you put it too strong it can go a bit more orange so I got a really lovely yellow but what I was slightly concerned about is that with soap dough I never let it go through gel whereas natural colours come out more and look better when they go through gel so what I did is I thought well I'd got my lovely sample colour when I gelled my little sample so I actually put a little bit more Aneto in than my sample and can you see this is sort of the colour that I came out with even though it didn't go through gel it still made it that more orangey colour so I then made some more soap dough and put less of the Anato in and backed it back down and I got back to the yellow that I wanted so I'm really pleased with that so a bit of trial and error there and the other one's fine I'm sure I'll find a use for that very pale orangey colour and then lastly this green this green is a blend and it's a blend of Anato and indigo that I've made into some soap dough and with the challenge we had to use at least one botanical I've obviously got more than that just in my embed and one of our colours had to be a blend of two of the other colours we were using in our soap so in my embed I meet that criteria as well in that I do have this grey which is a combination of my plain and my activated charcoal and I do also have my green which is a blend of Aneto and indigo to get my green colourant and then obviously in the main soap I'm going to have some other natural colours coming in as well okay so that's my plan now what I need to do is I'm going to extrude all of these out and then build my little bird I'm not going to do all the extruding because I don't on the video because I don't want this video to end up too long so I'm just going to go out and just extrude all these shapes you've seen me extruding before and then we'll put them all together I've extruded all my pieces and these are the bits just for one of the birds so let's start putting it together so I've got some nice clean distilled water here and a nice clean paintbrush so first thing I'm doing is take the chest of the bird and I'm going to put this little flash of black into there 
just joining with distilled water. Now remember when you just join something with distilled water it will initially be a lot slippier and not stick together but as that water dries it will really grip your embed nice and tightly and make it a nice solid embed. Okay so a little bit slippy at first but then you will hold it. So that's why it's best to make these a little bit early and let that water go off. A bit like, you know when you have a bar of soap and you get it wet and then you leave it on the side of the bath and it really sticks to the side of the bath, doesn't it? It's really tough to move. That's what we're sort of aiming for, that stick effect that the water gives us. And using distilled water, remember, is really important so that these are going to be nice and clean. I know a lot of people don't use distilled water when they make their soap, but then that's going to be mixed with the lye and go through saponification. We've got something here that's already saponified, so we're just using water to stick it. So therefore it is really important that we keep it lovely and clean. Okay, so there's the sort of main part of the bird's chest. I'm going to now construct his little head. So this is the top of its head. take a little black piece to give us an eye okay, and then this white bit is the other part of the head the sort of cheeks of the bird as it were Now I've got the beak, but the beak is very, very delicate. So what I'm going to do is leave that till last to pop on just before I set it aside. Otherwise, the more I manhandle this, then the more I'm going to squash and distort that beak. Okay, I'm just going to leave those little minutes to set them together and then I can lift it onto the bird. half the bird being made um, but foolishly I let my camera battery run out so um, sorry I couldn't show you all of that but let's get on with making the base of my soap now I'm going to do a rimmed soap but what I'm going to do is try and do it in a different method I'm not going to make the rim first I'm going to make the inside first and then cover it with a rim so this is an all natural soap because it's for the soap challenge that's nothing to do with it being a rimmed soap that's just what I've chosen to do so most of my soap I want some nice pink colour so I've got a madder infusion here I do infuse my madder with oil I know a lot of people don't but I do do an infusion and keep it for at least a year so it does work really well this is my normal base oils minus any olive oil and this is some olive oil so what I've done is I've worked out I'm doing a 20% madder infusion so these are all my oils and this lot together would be the total olive oil that I would normally use and that will complete my normal recipe okay so I'm just going to put those in together okay and this is my madder infusion and I have strained my madder I don't like the lumps madder can have some quite sharp big lumps in it so I do strain my madder before using it and again that's one of the reasons why I don't like adding madder at trace just popping the powder as it were in because it's it's quite a coarse grit in it and if you put too much in it can give you quite a nasty scratchy soap okay so there's that ready the next color I need is I do want some brown so I'm just going to use some nice cocoa powder I'm using my cocoa powder, I don't want my brown too dark, so I'm using this cocoa powder at a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. Which for the small amount of soap that I'm making is only a quarter of a teaspoon. Yay, tea! Switch your Hi, tea. Thank you. Okay. Yay, tea. <laughs> You're getting used to that by now, aren't you? Right, so I'm just going to blend that in. I'm just going to put a little bit of that oil in first. 
and then just kind of give it a mix around like you would with a mica I just find it easier with a small amount because then you can get rid of any lumps that there may be in the cocoa okay so that's nice so this is again this is the rest of the oils that I need for my cocoa and you could just use, use cocoa just like a mica and it's actually quite a nice reliable thing to use in soap especially if you struggle with some browns aren't soap stable and you can find that they go grey but cocoa is pretty good okay so there's that ready okay so those are the only two colours that I need for the inside of my rimmed soap plus my little embed let's prepare what we need now for my actual main soap that's going in my rimmed soap I've got a couple of random tubes you can see this one wasn't quite long enough so I had a short one and a longer one so this is going to be my internal soap and I've just taped that together to get what I need in addition to that now I don't normally line my tubes I am actually going to line these for a couple of reasons the first reason is is I actually want to unmold these reasonably early so I don't want to damage my soap so I want to get my soap out reasonably early without it getting too firm so I've got the best chance of everything all adhering together really nicely and the second reason is I'm going to use another tube for the outside rim so therefore this will be the soap that I make it will slip in there and leave a gap and then I'll have a tiny rim from this outside acrylic tube but I felt that this was perhaps a little bit bigger than I wanted not to give you a decent rim so what I've done is with these little silicone mats that I've got I've cut them to size and that means I can obviously use them in these tubes again and I'm going to use them to line these silicone moulds to make them a little bit smaller now here what I'm doing is I'm just oiling them a bit and the reason I'm doing that is because if you just put a silicone one of these silicone sheets into one of these plastic or acrylic tubes it sort of grips like a vice and it's almost the opposite of giving you a nice non-slip lining but if you do put some oil on it and this oil is going to go against the tube it's not going to go against the soap then I find that that gives us just the right amount of slip that we need to be able to, to, be able to get these unmoulded nicely Okay, so I'm just going to drop those in and I've cut them so they fit exactly so I don't have any overlap or any um, you know nasty bits sticking up into my soap the same with the other one <laughs> okay so there's those done right next thing the other thing I want now just to complicate things I actually want to do a bit of a design in these I don't want to just make them all one color then just pop the embed in I actually want to have some little layers in there and I want the layers going sort of up through the soap so I'm going to have to pour my soap and then have it set up while the tube is laying down so what I've done is I've made some little end caps these are just cardboard and all I did was I took some cardboard I put my tube on top and I scored round it and now all I'm just going to do is take one of these I don't want it to come all I just want it to do I'm going to have this laid down like that and I just want to stop as much as I can soap dribbling out of it whilst it's laid down so I'm just going to put these on tightish and the reason I've cut it like this is because if you take a circle and just cut tabs around it 
then obviously as you can see there I can use that around my edge and I've got something to grip it on so I'm going to get these basically lined up looks pretty good Now I could stick these on. The reason I'm not sticking them on certainly now is because I'm going to need to remove them <laughs> to get my little bird in. So it's all a bit complicated. Okay, it would just be easier just to pour a solid colour. But hey, there we go. So I'll just do the other one and then we'll be ready. I've pulled off the amount of madder oils that I need for this part of the soap and this is my lye and my sodium lactate this is only a small amount so I just want a tiny little bit of pink in the base of each of these tubes so I'm just going to blend them up with my little mini mix of my Greek frappe maker using an essential oil blend as this is an all natural soap and this is um, a folded orange, lavender and a little bit of patchouli. my little cardboard inserts are going to work I'm hoping it's not all going to spill out all over the place but I guess we'll find out won't we <laughs> quite nervous about this So apart from me dribbling it down the side, seems to be holding. So I'm just going to pour the second bit into that one. I'm going to put these into my nice hot trolley to help them set up. And then we will come back when we do the next layer. So I'm going to put that madder in there. Just so I've sort of got a, like a mottled blue and pink colour is all I'm looking for. I'm not actually looking for a swirl design. Okay, I think that should be fine. It's really, really thin, but that's exactly what I want. Okay, so I'm going to now pop that in my, uh, to keep warm and gel. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same again. 
I've got some plain, just literally just my plain oils here. I'm going to do exactly the same in, again in another mould, so I'm just going to mix this up, pour it in, and then put that away. My mallet has set up nicely, and it was absolutely fine. I've got no leaks. I've got, it's a little bit messy, I don't know if you can see that, on the end there, but that's where I was trying to pour it in but absolutely fine, didn't leak at all, so that worked well. So now I'm doing a little brown layer, which is going to sort of represent a branch for my bird to be sitting on. So this was that cocoa that I've mixed up. Can you see it's quite a light colour? I didn't want it too dark, and this was one teaspoon per pound of oils, the rate that I used it there. So if you want darker than that, then you'd need to sort of increase that rate. Just gonna again pour that in. Okay, <laughs> I think that's working really well, good. Okay, so I'm just going to leave those to the side until that brown's ready and then I can use that to help me get the bird into the mould and hopefully keep it in position. Here we are back again and what I've done now is I've got my tubes, I've taken off the cardboard ends that I had because I don't I'm going to start sticking it up the right way and I also need to get my bird in. So as you can see there, that's worked quite well. I've got my thin layer of brown. It looks a bit messy on the end there just because I had some spare to scrape in so I just popped that in the end. But you can see the pink starting to go pink now from the purple and then the light. I wanted a nice light brown and that's staying pretty well set. That's good. And what I've done is because I'm now going to put this up this way, I've replace the end that I had with just some folded over old cling wrap that I had and an elastic band back on it and I've done that for both of my tubes so what I want to do is now fit my little bird in and then I'm hoping that by having this on here when I go to pour my soap in to finish these sections off Embeds can float around quite a lot, so I'm hoping it will stop the bird floating around too much. Right, one of these is slightly longer than the other, so let's try and make sure I get the right one. Okay, in our little bird. Okay, I think that one's set in. I'm going to try and carefully lift it up so you can sort of see. I'm a bit worried. Can, can you sort of... Let's get these finished off then. So I've blended up that last bit of madder oils into my lye and sodium lactate and added my fragrance oil. There we are. So now I just need to pour these last little bits in. So, so there we are with those. All looks pretty solid at the bottom. I can't see anything leaking out, so that's good. Let's pop them nice and straight. Now I'm just going to put them into my heated cupboard to go through gel. And then we'll see what we've got tomorrow and then we'll embed those into another soap to make a rim.
And then what I've got, I'm not sure how well they're showing on the screen, these are my larger acrylic tubes that I'm going to actually make my soap in. And I've just marked out where the size of the soap, where it will be cut. And I'm just going to go through now and take these little shapes and I'm going to use some water and I'm going to just design my rims. So I'm just going to pop, pop a little bird Then maybe a little cloud. Okay, so I'm just going to gradually build up my design around the side so I need to do that for each one of these rims so I'm going to do three soaps to a rim then I've got four of these so I've got to do these 12 times I've done my little moulds so they're all nicely decorated just make sure they're all pushed down nicely and then I've got my cute little bird that's come out really sweet, hasn't it? And I'm just going to drop that in the middle. Okay, and then that should keep it nicely centred so I get a nice even rim round. So I've got some more soap made up here with again some indigo infusion and I'm just going to use this to fill these up. Okay, I think they're all nicely filled. I can't see any air bubbles around. I've had a good check through the sides, so I think they're going to be okay. So I'm just going to leave the top to set a little bit. Then I'm going to cover them with some cling wrap and put them away. I do make far too much blue soap with that indigo, but that's fine because I can now just turn this back into some more indigo soap dough because I haven't fragranced that outside so that should be fine. Here we are the next day and I've unmoulded all my little soaps and they come out really well I'm so pleased with them. Those rims have come out really nicely so obviously a little bit rough on the ends so what we're going to do is we're going to trim those and then just get them cut into bars. Oh, they've come out so cute, I do love them. And for me, this is a, a nice way of making a rim because it just widens up the things like putting embeds in them a little bit more without that worry of having to try and bend a rim and all of that sort of thing. You know, when you're just worried about how did it gone through gel and will it be okay and all that sort of stuff. So I think this may be the way that I ever do any rimmed soaps in future. Oh, so these really come out really cute, nice little, these are like a blue tip that we have here in the UK. I'm not sure if you get them um, in other places, but <laughs> it's come out really cute. So I'm very pleased. And here's a photo of the finished soaps. I do really love these soaps. I'm really pleased with the way that they've come out and I hope you like them too. Why not consider joining us on my Patreon page where I add lots of behind the scene 
things and also go into much more depth with tutorials and techniques to try and help if you're a soap maker you bring along your soap making skills. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up and why not consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!